Okay, so a texture application. So there's all different things you can do with acrylic paint to add texture. Gel medium is one of the most popular and common ones. It's pretty good. Why, why it's good? It gives pretty good texture, but it uh, doesn't change the color of the paint. Okay, so if you put red paint into it, it will be red paint just thick, okay? Modeling paste is basically gel medium that has marble dust ground inside of it. Now it, um, um, it gives more texture than does your gel mediums, but it almost acts like you're adding white paint into the color. So it turns all of your colors into a sort of pastel. When I'm doing texture, I like using the pie plates because you can really uh, mix up your colors well that way. There. Hey. Making icing for a cake. And in terms of applying the texture paint, there's a gazillion ways you can apply paint. You can obviously use a paintbrush. You can use a palette knife. This is called scraping when you apply it like this. And you can use a palette knife to do that. Although something that's really cool when you get into scraping is to use different kinds of trowels other than the palette knife. Because palette knives come in sort of very specific sizes. So I'll show you what I mean. If you take just a nice firm piece of cardboard you can really play with your, your scrapings. And do interesting things. Now, like I said, you can't get a much cheaper tool than a piece of cardboard, right? Some people will, you know, they'll go to the hardware store and they'll spend lots of money on buying these, uh, these, you know, the plaster applier things, but a chunk of cardboard works just as well. So just save a piece, chop a piece out of your recycling and pull that out. And I'll uh, show that to you. And you can just get a sense of how neat that surface looks. And that's just with the two colors right now, right? The, the underpainted wash and then uh, the thicker pink. So another cool thing you can do with texture is just with a piece of paper, which was a source image for one of my paintings. Okay. And I'm gonna press into it. And then I'm gonna pull it off. And you can see how those texture marks get all rippled and stuff like that. So I'm gonna do that. And then I've got all this on this and I can press it onto another canvas. Right? And I have a start of something neat here. I'm gonna press again. Now maybe I'll use my trowel again. To flatten out some of it.
All right. And put it onto this one. Okay, now, so I showed you about uh, modeling paste and gel medium and house paint. Another really cheap, uh, cheap tool that you can use is, and sometimes I would use is drywall compound. Ready-made drywall compound. Now, you don't ever wanna just apply it straight to the surface of your painting because it does, doesn't have enough flexibility, it'll crack, okay? Um, but if you take some of it, and this is much cheaper, right? Drywall compound is much cheaper than buying modeling paste at an art supply store. But it gives you quite a bit of texture, quite a bit of body into your paint for very cheap. But yeah, you have to make sure the ratio is pretty good because if it has a good ratio of paint into it, it'll give you thickness to your paint without cracking. If you, if you have too much of just the drywall compound, it'll crack because you're painting a canvas is flexible, right? There you can see those brush strokes will pretty much stay like that with that kind of thickness to them. The next technique I'll show you is splattering and spraying. And that works really well with, uh, with house paint. Splattering is literally Okay, now most people think of that with Jackson Pollock. However, Jackson Pollock always did his on the ground. It was more like this. And at any point, you can use a paintbrush. This is a good time, I think, in this one to use a paintbrush. Let's see if Scrafito works here. Yeah. <laughs> 